Nissan might have been a little behind when it comes to the fully electric SUV crossover market, but they are not behind when it comes to EVs because they've had over a decade of learning about electrification and how to do it right. And they did an excellent job in this Aria. Now the Aria is also the only electric car, only electric car that has gone pole to pole. That's right, they drove from the North Pole all the way to the South Pole in a Nissan Aria. So now I have one here and we're not gonna go pole to pole but I'm gonna show you everything about this car from the front to the back. So let's check it out. When we're looking at the front, you can definitely see and tell that this is a Nissan. Just coming down the road, you don't have to guess what it is. It has the Nissan kind of trademark angular V is what I see here. And all the Nissans look the same in the front or they have that same design cue. And this is one of those crossover SUVs that it's kind of hard to decide whether you like the styling or not. I actually think this one doesn't look too bad. The originally when I saw it, I thought it sat a little high. I thought it looked like it might tip over, but actually this does look very, very good. Now this blue color with the black top looks really good. I'm not a much of a blue person, but this is a really nice blue paint. Got a lot of sparkle in it looks really nice and I like the way that this angles down right here and you have this sharp angle on this window right here. This is open through here so air passes down through there, give you better aerodynamics and to help keep the back window clean even though they also do have a wiper which some don't. Some have decided oh we don't need a wiper you do need a wiper. And now most of those are now putting wipers on their car. So good job, Nissan. Proud of you guys for having that wiper in there. Although it probably would look a little bit better if there was a way to put it up underneath there, but I know that's going to affect the aerodynamics above that part. All right, let's talk a few things about what's powering this car. And I wonder, does it have a frunk? And no we do not have a frunk we have a lot of stuff in here but nowhere to store anything except we can store some leaves up here because it's that time of the year all right let's talk about the powertrain this is the platinum plus so it also has the e-force all-wheel drive system so this is a dual motor all wheel drive with 389 horsepower and 442 pound feet of torque. You get a zero to 60 in about five seconds, which is pretty quick for an SUV. There are two battery options. One is a 64 kilowatt hour battery and the one that is in this one, the 87 kilowatt hour usable battery, it's a 90 kilowatt hour total capacity has a range of 267 miles which comes out to about 3.07 miles per kilowatt hour you get a peak charging rate of 130 kilowatts which is not a great number but it's not a terrible number either dc fast charging you can get 10 percent to 80 percent in about 40 minutes uh, hopefully that they can increase the charging speed on this as we move forward. Take a quick look at the cargo area. Here is the back of the Aria. Of course, you can see right here, you've got Platinum Plus E-Force and the Aria name badge there. Got a little button right underneath here is gonna open up. Now this does have a cargo shelf back here or cargo cover and we are going to remove this cargo cover which is pretty easy it's just got these little clips right up here and we can take that right out you can see things a little bit better now You've got 23 cubic feet of space back here underneath here you got a little storage off to the side got the charging cable in here and back here is a lot of your tire stuff there is your bose speaker in here 
All right, you got a cubby hole on this side and this side, and that's about it. You got a, a little hook right here for um, a tie down or maybe a cargo net back here. Anyway, let's drop these second row seats. So we're just going to flip this handle right here. That's going to drop those. Same thing on this side. We're going to push that up and drop that one. And now you have about 60 cubic feet of space. That is a really good amount of space. Pretty competitive for these SUV crossover segment here. You know, it's about the same size as the ID4 in comparison. Uh, I do like it. it. It is plenty of room. If you would need to sleep back here, you very easily could. What do you guys think about the Aria so far? If you're enjoying this video so far, can you guys go give me a thumbs up real quick, help spread this out to more people. And then we're gonna get in the inside because there's a lot of cool stuff in there that I wanna show you. Okay, let's take a look at the inside because there's a lot of awesome things in here. Okay, so we're gonna start here with the door and you do have this blue suede. As you can see, we do have blue seats in here. They're a nice, decent blue color. They're not like horrible. It actually kind of blends together really well with a lot of this black and a lot of this wood grain going around here. It looks really good. Uh, so you have all your controls right here. You have your memory seating right there. Of course, your Bose stereo system down here. You can see right there, E4s on the door. So you do have powered seats here with lumbar. They are pretty decently comfortable seats. I uh, drove in it for about two hours yesterday and felt pretty decent. All right, and then one of the cool things while we're right here, because it's hard to show you otherwise, the center console here, you can adjust this to fit your elbow or whatever space that you need. So you can move this forward and backwards. So you can slide that all the way back and then you can kind of see some of the stuff that is down here, which is a couple USB ports and a 12 volt plug and a little container right there. You can probably set your cell phone down in. All right, so you can move that back up. We'll go back up and there we go. All right, let's get on the inside and I'll show you a few more things. All right, coming across here. Now, this is all of that uh, suede material or Alcantara, whatever you want to call that. And then you just have some hard plastic up here, which is fine because nothing is going to be up there anyway. So that doesn't really matter. But this is nice and soft and it feels really good. And you come down here and you do have this kind of wood grain going across here. It actually does. I mean, I don't think that it's real wood, but it feels like real wood, but it looks like real wood but I don't think it actually is. I think this is awesome. I love it. I love the way that these are integrated into this panel. They are haptic feedback. So you just touch them, makes a little popping noise. So you know that's being done and you can actually shut the popping noise off if you don't want it on. Um, but then they are just really easy to use. They are really good haptic feedback buttons. They work very, very well. That is one of the cool things. And here is another. So you do have a glove box right here, which is, you know, normal, nice. I, I was actually surprised you have that gl glove box there because it really, it blends in really well and you don't really notice it. But you do have a secret storage compartment back here. You have a button that says open and close. So when we push the button to open that, there is the magic drawer. So you can see it's actually pretty deep. Uh, I have a charging cord in here. I have safety glasses in here. I've got a badge in there. It actually goes down there way far. So really good, a really nice hidden little drawer it goes away. And you have this wide open floor down here and it just makes it feel really comfortable and open and airy in here. You got a fully digital display speedometer on the right your power level and your regen is on the left and also you have your trip information there in the left up top you have your time you have your percentage of your battery you also have your estimated miles available i like that and then you can also have your efficiency of your miles per kilowatt hour in the center display also all right so then 
you can change that center display and that's where you can just you have this little toggle right here and it just goes back and forth and it changes everything in the center so you've got a couple things right there and you can press over you got tire pressure you can scroll battery capacity estimated charging time and how fast there is your torque all right tire pressure we're going to go back over and there's your navigation your bluetooth audio your uh, driver assistance and then settings we go into settings and then this is where you can change all of your stuff your driver assistance features which your intelligent cruise your lane centering lane change assist this lane centering also has hands off mode so this does do hands-free driving on the interstate and i'll throw a clip up on that right now okay so we are now using nissan's lane centering and hands-free driving so you can see up there is the heads-up display it's got everything lit up really nice all right we are going hands-free so you can see that i am not touching anything and we are just cruising down the road all right now this does have lane change assist all right we're gonna do lane change it's going and it wants me it wants me to grab the wheel every time i don't understand let's go so all right there we go on its own over we're lane centering and see it tells me to grab the wheel again so that's really confusing um anyway it does it uh, it doesn't seem to be doing it the greatest way but it does work all right we can go back out of that and you got lane change assist lane assist blind spot monitoring emergency assist traffic sign assist parking assist driver monitor you've got all of this stuff is all integrated into your this driver's display instead of into your infotainment screen so you don't have to dig around a whole lot so you got person personal display which is this one over here you can make adjustments to that you've got a heads up display which is right out there which you probably can't see real well but i will try to make it visible for you and then you've got eco mode setting uh so you go into eco mode you got drive assist view your history and something else <laughs> all right tpms settings vehicle settings ev settings maintenance it's just crazy you got all of this stuff in here that you can change all kinds of crazy stuff there's all your wipers and your lighting and everything so yeah that's where all of your information is okay we'll go back to the steering wheel uh really nice steering wheels laid out really well up here you've got your driver assistant that's going to turn on your cruise control and if you have your lane centering and everything turned on that is going to turn all of that on at the same time if you have it all shut off it'll just do your adaptive cruise there's how you set your adaptive cruise distance and then you've got up and down and then you've got phone voice recognition and then on this side you have your uh, all your menu for your stereo functions your forward backwards and your volume and then this all controls everything in this center display here so we can do that back button and clear that out and steering wheel actually does feel pretty good uh, it's leather wrapped and this this is a feels pretty good uh, one thing that i have noticed when i'm driving is, is that i i put my elbow on the armrest so my elbow goes on the armrest and then I reach out and I usually hold about right here on the steering wheel. Now, when I have this set, I have this fully extended all the way back and then I pull it all the way down until I can just barely see. So I'm kind of looking like this. Should be able to put my arm on the armrest and grab the handle right here and feel comfortable. Well, the problem is that this armrest is too low. So this is kind of what it looks like. So my elbow is way down here and for me to comfortably hold the steering wheel, I am more at kind of holding clear down here because I can't go up here. If I go up here, I'm, it's pulling my arm off of the armrest. So I think these armrests are a little bit low. I think they need to bring these up just a little bit, probably about another inch or so, and they would probably be perfect. 
Uh, but it's just an annoyance for me. I'm sure that it doesn't affect everybody, but it is just, you know, like I said, it's an annoyance for me. Uh, so it might affect others. All right, we'll go on over here to the infotainment screen. Now, like I said, most of your stuff is being done over here in the driver's display, but we're going to talk about the infotainment screen. You do not have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It is wired, which is okay because then your phone stays charged. Um, so this is your home screen here and you've got your navigation and everything else here. Um, and my phone, I don't have it connected right now. We can go to navigation, bring up the big screen. There is the, your audio. So then you can choose between Bluetooth, XM, AM, FM, and then you have phone. So you can connect and talk to your phone. Then you got your climate control right here. This is where you can control everything. So you got your temperature and your heated steering wheel. Here's your heated and cooled seat button. You can turn that on or off. All right, so then you can just set this up however you want. So go back to the home screen and we can go up here. There's a little icon right here, which is hard to find. So there's your settings. Now let's go to your, you can connect your phone, your navigation, your sounds and beeps inside the car. So you can just calm down and shut some of those off. Your general stuff is going to be all your times and whether you're driving in miles or kilometers and all that stuff. Then you can swipe across here and you have Nissan Connect services. So if you have it set up on your phone and then over here you have EV. And so we're going to click on the EV and you go down through here and it's going to tell you battery and power alerts, your charging messages, map icons for charging stations. Yes, you definitely want that on filter map icons. So then you can actually adjust that to ones that are open for 24 hours. Yes. Do you want it to show closed ones? No. Auto save, uh, new charging station. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then we'll go on down here a little bit and you can turn on your battery heater. So if you're headed to charge up your vehicle, you know, that's where you're going, turn on your battery heater. I don't know how long it's going to take to heat up the battery for charging, but I would suggest turning it on probably anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes ahead of time. Um, and then you should be good by the time you get to the charger and pull max speed. That is the biggest thing that I wanted to show you in there. So then we're going to come down here and we already talked about, you do have some climate control buttons right down here and they work really good. They're haptic feedback and you can easily move that up and down and you can see it up on the screen right there. You can just touch, touch. It just changes really quickly. All right, come on back and you do have an electronic parking brake. It is right there. Let's look at your gear selector here. So now what you have here is this is park. You're going to push that button down to go into drive or brake. You're going to pull it back, drive once, and then you pull it again and it goes into B and it will display up on the screen here. Now to go to neutral, you're just going to slide it up once. There we go. And then if you want to go into reverse, this one was tricky and I couldn't figure it out because it looks like you would just push it forward again to put it in reverse. That's not actually what you have to do. You have to push this button on the side and then push up and then that puts it into reverse. Okay. That one was a little tricky when I first learned that. So then you have two cup holders right here and these little flappy things. Um, I haven't decided whether I like them or whether they work very well, but they're, they're kind of loose and flappy. So I don't think they're going to hold things really well, but I could be wrong. Uh, we come back here and you have auto park. So it will park itself. You have the E step, which is like one pedal driving, although it doesn't bring you to a complete stop. And then you have open and close for that tray up there that we talked about just a minute ago and your drive modes. So let's check out your drive modes and see what we got going on here. One of these is going to show you got sport, standard, eco, and snow. Well, let's just go ahead and put it in sport. <laughs> That's where we're going to want it anyway, here in a few minutes. So this also does have a cover that can close. So it looks a little bit better. And then you have your armrest right here. Now you would think that this would be a center console, but actually it's not. You lift it up and you have just this tiny little tray back here. 
set keys and maybe something else back here but here is your wireless phone charger that is pretty nice because you can just slide it in there even with this closed you can just take your phone and just slide it right on in there and your phone's out of the way like i said you can also probably put it in this little tray right down here without any problem okay this does have a panoramic roof on it also so we can open this up now and one more time and so you do have this really nice big actually it's not a panoramic roof it is actually a moon roof because you press the button and boom there is your moon roof all right i like that i like that that better than just a full panoramic roof what you do have with this one is a digital one so you can flip that and you have a camera showing the back which is really weird to me i have a trouble i'm having trouble with them and accepting them and they're just kind of look weird to me I, so i don't I hardly ever use them let's take a look at the backup camera on here so this one is actually pretty good you've got a bird's eye view here and then you just have the regular backup camera so that's pretty cool and you do have your auto park button right there also that's it from the front so let's go see how i fit back there i'm about six foot i don't think there's going to be much problem with space back there it looks pretty good but let's go test it all right so this door opens almost to a 90 degree angle not quite 90 degrees but it gives a big opening in here for you to get kids and stuff in here without any problem we get in and the driver's seat is in my driving position and yeah i have yeah probably about two to three inches there uh, so plenty of space there with my knees my head um, about another inch or so above my head so yeah i fit back here pretty good seats feel pretty comfortable um yeah that's about it there are a few things back here so let's take a look at them so your door does have a pocket down here for a water bottle and you've got speaker for your Bose system right there. You got Alcantara across here. So they did carry that to the back. That's nice to see. Fully leather seats, just like the front. And I love the stitching on these if I didn't mention that earlier. Across here, you do have a little mat pocket right here. So, and then you have your vents right here and you see this is all like a wood grain looks really nice you got heated seats back here also and a usb a and usb c plug uh, you do have a center armrest right here so we're good right there we got two a couple cup holders also and then here's a good look at that panoramic roof and we'll take a quick look at the front again looks really nice it is pretty comfortable back here and there's plenty of room so now the question is can i afford this can you afford this is this an affordable ev well let's take a look at that right now and then go take it out for a drive as for the pricing for the nissan aria there are several different trim levels different combinations with batteries and all-wheel drive and front-wheel drive so i'm going to give you base pricing the one with the most range and then what we have right in front of us so we're going to start with the engage front wheel drive it's a 64 kilowatt hour battery with about 216 miles of range it starts out at thirty nine thousand five hundred and ninety dollars now the one with the most range is going to be the venture plus front wheel drive 87 kilowatt hour battery with 304 miles of range starts at $41,190. Now the Platinum Plus all-wheel drive that we have right here with the 87 kilowatt hour battery and 267 miles of range starts at $54,190. And our tester right here in front of us with options and destination fee comes in at $56,940. Now it's time to take this thing for a drive. We can go right out here, do a zero to 60. So we're gonna pull out. All right, we got a brake torque. Ready, a little bit, one, two, three, here we go. Oh yeah, the power builds. 
at 60. Yeah. <laughs> it says five seconds. Yeah, I bet it's five seconds. I may have been even less than that. That, wow. It, it really, it, it goes, it starts out slow, and then the power just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds. It just keeps on building up, and it, it wow. Yeah. It's every bit of five seconds. That's awesome. Now, let's talk a little bit about this car because, like I had mentioned, this came a little bit late compared to everyone else. So, this was came out in 2023, and everybody else was kind of putting their cars out around 2020, 2021, and this one came a little late. But, they also already had the Nissan Leaf. So, it's not like they were late to electrifying or late to making an EV. It was just this crossover market that became a huge thing when the EVs hit. Everybody wanted this e this crossover SUV uh, electric car because it was big enough for their families and big enough for them to travel in. Well, <sighs> Nissan, I think, did a very, very good job with this car. Um, I have been impressed driving it. I like it. I feel comfortable in here. I could drive this every day uh, without any problems um, other than the few things that I have already mentioned which the thing that bugs me the most is the armrest because with my hand right here where it's at I'm not even touching the re armrest I am about an inch an inch to an inch and a half away from the armrest and I can't touch it the only way I can do it is if I put my hand clear down here at the bottom I don't feel comfortable driving that way and that's another thing. The voice recognition just randomly goes off all the time. <laughs> and I'm always having to tell it, cancel, cancel, stop, no. Um, so that, I'm not sure what the problem is with that. I must be triggering some word that I'm saying. But yeah, the armrest is really low. I don't feel comfortable with my hand clear down here. Uh, so it really needs to be up here for me to feel comfortable. So I'd like to see the armrest get raised up about an inch to an inch and a half and it would be perfect in here. I love this blue color actually. I was a little concerned when I found out that I was going to have a blue interior but this blue really does look nice um, and it, it feels good and I like the leather seats and the stitching looks awesome. The Alcantara suede going all the way around looks really good and the fact that they carried it on into the back is is nice to see also. I like the wood grain with all the integrated haptic feedback buttons. Haptic feedback buttons don't bother me. I, I get used to them and they're fine and these work really really good um, and they're integrated into the wood and it just looks awesome. Same with the ones that are up here on uh, next to your gear shifter it's you know those buttons are easy to use too and you push them down and they make noise and everything like that and everything works really well where the good thing is that they didn't put haptic feedback on the steering wheel because with the haptic feedback in the steering wheel, I mean they kind of did but your main buttons that you want to change things on there are not haptic feedback buttons they are a scroll and a wheel and a and buttons and everything like that so yeah, that's, that is nice. Um, now the E-Step on this, which is their one pedal driving, um, it works good. Uh, it's pretty similar to just using your B mode in most cars uh, that don't have a one pedal drive because the one pedal drive in here doesn't bring you to a complete stop. The B mode will do the same thing and this car is just not as aggressive. So if you put the B mode on, and you have the e-step on then what it will start to slow you down and then once you get under about 50 miles an hour somewhere around 45 miles an hour then it really starts to grab and break you and slow you down fairly quickly but you also have to use your brake to stop yourself it's good uh, it's perfectly fine it's perfectly normal for most people and anybody who buys this at the beginning they are probably not going to turn the b mode on they probably won't have the e-step on they'll probably drive it like a regular car 
until they decide they're going to try the B mode. So then they try the B mode for a little while and they start to get used to that. And then it's like, okay, well now I'll try the E step. And then once you get used to it, you have it on all the time. It's just one of those things. Once you get used to one pedal drive and the way that the car behaves in these modes, then you actually enjoy it and you drive that way all the time. Uh, the ride comfort in here actually feels really good. Uh, it's it's not stiff it's not harsh it eats up the bumps really well um, but they did a good job and have this dialed in pretty well um, i would feel comfortable um, taking corners at a reasonable amount of speed and not worrying about whether it's going to have trouble with it acceleration in here which we just checked earlier <laughs> is amazing it doesn't seem like you're going to get that out of this but uh, you really do um, very impressive well, if you enjoyed this review of the 2024 Nissan Aria, give me a thumbs up and maybe you want to subscribe. That would be great if you would. Watch the video that's up on the screen. One I put up there for you, the other one YouTube put up there for you. I think you're going to like them both. You have a blessed day and hopefully I see you in the next video.